Hello and welcome back to AEC Workbench. I'm Bill. I'm so glad you joined me today and I hope you have watched all the other great videos on Bluebeam Review. There's been two other ones, one on the introduction to the user interface, one on comparing and overlaying drawings, and finally this one on how to use the markup tools. In this video we're going to show you how to use markup tools, obviously. We're also going to show you how to edit the content. Now, what the heck is the difference between markup and content? Well, content is what was printed from the original application. AutoCAD, Revit, Word, Excel, what have you. All that stuff is the content. The markup is like this cloud that I'm going to draw right here. That's a markup. This cloud is a markup, and I can use the native tools within Bluebeam to edit the markup. I have to use special tools to edit the content. I'm going to show you that in a few minutes. All right, so I've got a cloud here. One of the things about all the markups, including clouds, is you can drag them and move them. Well, if you have your mouse in the right spot, you can drag them and move them. See how that changes from a hand to that little arrow with, a, with the move icon on it? Well, you've got to have it on that arrow in order for it to work. But also, if you move over that dashed line right there and right click, you're going to get some commands to edit this particular markup. So the commands are going to be different if you're right clicking in a different spot. So I'm going to go to control point and I'm going to add a control point. These grips in here are called control points. So you can add as many or as few or not even add any control points for that matter to a cloud as you want. And by adding control points, I can change the shape of a cloud. Isn't that cool? Just by adding in two control points. Up here at the top of review, this is the quick properties palette. That's what I call it anyway, and that's what we're gonna call it in this video. These are all of the most used commands to modify this particular kind of markup. We're in a different markup. You may get more or less of these tools up here at the top. So we have a line. I can change the color of the cloud line work if I want to from red to a dark blue or even to a lighter blue. I can even change the background fill color to a light blue as well if I want to. And that may not be a good cloud, might be if that's what you want to do is block out all that stuff but that's not what i intended i intended to bring some focus to that stuff so i'm going to change the fill opacity right here down to 20 percent and that's going to give me a cloud that has a nice blue background but yet i can still see through the cloud to see the mechanical room beneath it i can also change the line weight as well and up that, and then the cloud becomes a little bit bolder, maybe easier to see, depending on the person. So I've got all of those different clouds. So now I've got a cloud that looks pretty good, in my opinion. I hit escape to get out of whatever I was doing. If I go into polyline, those lines have control points as well, because they are lines that are created of more than one line. And I can right click on that line and go to control points and I can add another control point just like I did with the cloud. Now, How did I get that line to work so well and how did I get it to draw? Well, let's do it again. I'm going to click on that line and delete. I'll go back to polyline, get to my polyline command. I'll click once, move my mouse, click again, move to where I want the line to stop and double click. And double clicking tells it I am done. In the polyline command, if I drag, which means click, hold the mouse button down, move my mouse with the mouse button still down, then let go, it draws in a square or rectangle. Polyline, rectangle, and cloud are very similar to each other. I could click on this polyline, and I can change the line style of it if I want. I can make it insulation line. I can make it a gas line. I can do all sorts of different things with with the polyline. I can do the same kind of stuff with a line, but I can't add control points to a line. A line is just a line. A polyline, I can add a start and an end point to it as well, so I can make this a leader if I wanted to. I can put an arrowhead at the end. I can change the size of the arrowhead to be larger if I wanted to be larger. 
I can change the end, put an arrow at the other end as well. I can change the color of the fill of the arrowhead as well. All sorts of different things. I can even hit highlight and make that a highlighter. And what the highlighter will do, I believe, is make this so that it's transparent. See? You know, it's transparent. If I turn off the highlighter, it's no longer transparent. So that's pretty nifty as well. All right, what other commands? Oh, the ellipse command. The ellipse command, everyone probably uses it the same way, and if they want to get a circle, they click ellipse, and they cuss out Bluebeam for not having a circle command. Or they probably don't cuss it out, and they just accept it that it won't draw a circle. Well, it will draw a perfect circle if you want to. You can click the ellipse command, hold the shift key down, and you can draw a circle inside of a box. And it is a perfect circle inside of the box. I will zoom extents, and I want to draw in another circle somewhere. I want to draw it around something. I want to draw my circle around this themed classroom. So I'm going to draw in a circle. I'm going to hold the Alt key down, pick about in the middle of that area, and then I can drag my circle where I want it to be. I can draw a circle from the inside out if I want to. So that's neat. What else do we have to explore? Let's draw in a a call out. So I'm going to do a call out and I go click here where I want the arrowhead to be. I'll click again. I'll type in what I want it to say click out and I've got my call out. So what if I wanted another leader? Well, I could click on my call out and this will work with any of the leader commands. The call out or this cloud plus will work with that too. I'll right click on the control point and I'll pick add leader and it adds another leader here that I can pick where I want the leader to go. If I move around it's going to put it in a different spot. Maybe I want that leader to go right there. I can grab this and scoot it back over and it should fix that leader for me. Isn't that cool how it fixes that leader? So I can add multiple leaders to the same note if I'd like to. That's pretty nifty. All right, so now I've got all of these different things here. What if I wanted it to remember this cloud because I want to draw this cloud all the time because that is going to be my signature cloud. Well, it's right up here in my recent tools. The last seven things that I've drawn are in my recent tools. If you've drawn more than seven, I got lucky and I just drew only six more after the cloud. So it's right there. If you drew more than seven, your cloud won't be there. But that's okay. There's still hope for you. So click on tool chest, the word tool chest up here. If you're not in the tool chest area, you can click here to get to the tool chest. And then we'll click here on the little arrow next to tool chest and we will pick Manage Tool Sets. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new tool set that will go down here at the bottom. So I'm going to pick Add. I'm going to call it, you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it Bill's Tool Set. There we go. I'm going to pick OK. It's going to ask where I want to save it. I'm just going to hit Save because that's where you should save it, the spot that it comes up. I'm going to show you how to save it, how to export it here in a minute to share it with your friends. So I'm just going to pick Save. And then I'll pick OK, and it's added it down here to the bottom of my tool chest. I'm not going to, I'm going to assume that yours is in here, but if yours is here, you can just simply drag it down to, to this spot, and it will create a cloud for you. If your cloud looks like that, I'm going to show you how to fix it so it looks like that, so don't worry. All right, I'm going to click on my cloud. I'm going to right-click on my cloud. And I'm going to pick Add to Tool Chest. I'm going to hold my mouse still until that pops up. And then I'll scoot over and then down to Bill's Tool Set. And it added that cloud. And that works great if that's the kind of cloud I want to put in. But that's not what I want to do because now I'm going to have to edit the grips in order to get the cloud the way I want it to look. And that's not very helpful. Why didn't I even create that kind of a cloud to begin with when I just wanted a rectangle? So let me undo what I've done there, controlling Z. I'm going to double click on it. When you double click on it, it changes its mode. Now it's in draw mode. So I can pick that and I can draw in a cloud however I want it to be. And that cloud will use those properties of 
that one that's there in the tool chest. So that's how you create a tool chest. And that's how you add things to the tool chest, just like that. Now, if you look at the tool chest, you'll see these design symbols. It looks different than these tools here, doesn't it? It is in a list view or a detail view as opposed to a symbol view. So if I pick symbol, it'll go right back to that. If I go to, to detail, it'll go back to that. So you can change the way that your tool sets look by clicking on the gear. And when I click on the gear, I have an option to save it to export it. Bluebeam will automatically save your tool sets when you exit Bluebeam. But if I wanted to export this right now, I would need to save it first and then export it because all exporting is doing is copying it. So I want to hit save and that will save the tool chest. And now when I click on the gear again, you can see save is grayed out. That means it's been saved. So I will export it now and I can export it to wherever I want to export it. And it's called Bill's tool set. And now I have a backup of that tool set or I can send it off to a friend. So now I've got that. So now here's what I want to do next. I want to get into some content editing. I want to make this men's toilet a unisex toilet by removing the urinal and adding in another toilet or water closet, whatever you want to call it. So to do that, I need some content editing tools. So I'm going to right click where there's no icon on my tool area here, and I will go to Ed advanced and turn advanced on. My advanced shows up down here at the lower right. Yours may show up up here at the upper left. If it does, that's fine. You can leave it there or you can move it to wherever you want it to go. I'm going to click the erase content button here, lower right. And that will allow me to erase this urinal. So I'll get rid of the urinal. And it gets rid of the urinal. And I also got rid of part of the wall. But I'm not too worried about that because I'm going to grab part of the wall in the toilet so I can get it in the right spot. So let's grab this toilet here. To grab that, use the snapshot tool. These look pretty close and sometimes you get them mixed up. You'll hit the erase content when you mean snapshot or vice versa. But I'm going to hit the snapshot tool and I'm going to drag my mouse, click and hold there and Move it to copy that. But now I've got part of that door swing in there. So that's not going to work. So I'm going to hit escape. Then let go of the mouse button. I'm going to move over to this bathroom. Hey, there's one right there that doesn't have that door swing in the way. So let's copy that one instead. So we'll take a snapshot of that one. We'll move back over here to our unisex toilet. I'm using the scroll wheel on the mouse. I'm holding the scroll wheel down and moving the mouse and that's how I pan by the way. I'm going to do a control V which is paste and that pastes in that toilet. I need it rotated though don't I? Well this grip right here or control point will allow you to rotate. So that's how you ro rotate a markup by using that blue grip right there. And I can move this into place and voila I have a toilet in there instead of a urinal. I'll zoom in a little bit. Oh, I need to move it up just a small smackerel so that it looks better. There we go. Am I going to be able to get it into place? There we go. Sometimes you just need to move it out and back in for it to get in the right spot. So now I've got that toilet right there. You'd use the same kind of tools if you wanted to add in the door here. You can get a snapshot of the door and put it in there. So now I want to edit the text here. To edit the text, I'm going to right click where there's no toolbar again. If you can't get that right click to work to bring up the toolbar, you can go up to tools, toolbars, and the one I want to turn on is advanced text this time. And there it is right up here in the upper left corner. I want, to, I want to edit the text of that. Now that text, I can't double click on it to change it because it's part of the content. It's what was printed from Revit in this case. It could be printed from AutoCAD. It could, could be printed from Word. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to pick the edit text. It'll initialize and do its thing. I'm going to click right there. I've always had the best luck clicking in the middle of the text I want to change. 
and then type in what I wanted to say and then delete what I don't want. Well, I need an S instead of a Z, don't I? All right, and now I gotta click down here and move that toilet over like that. Perfect. So now I've changed the text of the content from men's to unisex. Isn't that neat? I bet you didn't know you could edit text that's inside of a PDF. And now your mind is blown because all these years you thought a PDF was safe and no one could edit your text. What else do I need to do? Well, now that this toilet is in there, it is a markup, see? That toilet is now a markup. I could keep it as a markup and really not care, or I could click on that toilet, right click, and say flatten. And that will flatten the toilet, and now the toilet is part of the markup so that it can't be erased or changed. It sort of protects that toilet. And that toilet, I did such a good job on that. You know, I think I'm going to move that toilet down here to my tool set. Then I'll have a copy of it in case I ever have to put another toilet in. So that's how you create tool sets, too. Create your tool set. Uh, do a snapshot. Paste it in. Move it from there to there. Now I've got a copy of the toilet. That's how I can create a bunch of symbols. Next thing I want to show you is how to create a signature from a scanned signature. Not a digital signature, if you will, but a scanned signature. So I'm gonna, we're gonna open up another file. It's called John. And there it is. There's a signature that I wanna create a tool for. So I can click on that and, and put it right in there. A good tool to use to scan if you don't have a scanner and you have an iPhone is called Scanner Pro. Scanner Pro does an excellent job. And in Scanner Pro, you can do your signature on some paper, find the one you like, use Scanner Pro to take a picture of it. It'll make it a PDF and it'll clean up the background so that it's nice and clean. So I've got John Hancock here. We use the snapshot tool and we'll grab John Hancock's signature and then we'll paste. Look at that, it shows up right here. But the, the problem I have is look at that. It's got that big black, or it's got that opaque background to it. So that's really not what I want. I want to be able to put my signature in there and have it not block out what's around it. So I'm going to undo that. And get that out of the way. Make sure there's nothing else there. Good. What I'm going to do is go to Document, and I'm going to do Color Processing. From Color Processing, I'm going to change it from Modify Colors to Mask image. And then I'm going to change the mask color to be the background color, which in this case is white. And then it masks it out. Now I'm going to change this part here. This is sort of the fuzz factor, what have you. I'm going to change that to about 9. That's what seems to work the best in my experience for this kind of a thing. So I'll pick OK. And now that signature looks exactly the same. But now, when we grab a snapshot of it and paste it in, and then I move it in over top, look at that. It's transparent. If yours isn't working quite as well, you still have a lot of white around the text, you may have to bump that number from 9 to something else. That's what that affects. So look at that. So I've got my John Hancocks here. I can move this one down to here. That's where I want. I can go back to my other drawing. I can grab that signature and put it right in there wherever I want it to be. Put my John Hancock on there. Look at that. And it's transparent. Isn't that cool? That is very cool. The last thing I want to bring up is the markup list. And we showed you the markup list in the introduction. But here is the markup list, and we're going to actually do some things with this markup list. The markup list shows you all of the markups that are inside of this document. I can see this one here is called the snapshot and that's that John Hancock. I know it is because it's the last one I put in. I really don't want it to be called snapshot. I want it to be called signature. So let's 
minimize that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete it out of here. Why am I going to do that? Well, because I'm going to edit this and I want to put it back in there in the next so the next time I use it is called signature again. Thinking ahead a little bit. So I've got it selected. I hit the properties to bring up the properties panel and I'm going to change the subject to signature. And so now it's called signature. If I look at the I gotta click somewhere else and that see now it's called signature. Get rid of that extra space at the end. There we go. So now I've got signature there. It's on that page, it's my author, it's the date. Everything else is good. I can't really change much about it because it's an image in a snapshot, is what it is. You can't do much with a snapshot, but I can change the subject to it. If I go back to my tool sets here. I can grab the signature and let's put it in here. Let's make sure it still says signature. It does, so that is good. So I can grab this and put it down here. So now I've got the signature down here that actually says signature on it instead of snapshot. Isn't that cool? So I've made that whatever name I want to give it. I can do the same things with any of the other things as well. So if I find that I have this cloud here, this cloud that I have. I want to give it a different name. Go to properties and say Bill's Cloud. So now it's Bill's Cloud. If I go and look at here, look, there's Bill's Cloud right there. That's that polyline we drew. You know, it's going to each of those different parts. So I'll go back to my markup list and I'm going to click this export button right here, the summary button. Now I want to create a PDF summary. And I'm just going to accept the defaults. The only thing you'd really want to change in here if you wanted to change anything is this padding. And I'll explain the padding in just a second here. So I'm going to hit OK. And it's going to process all my items and it creates this markup summary for me and it create it what it did is it took a snapshot around the markup so i can see the markup in place and it gave me all of these different things about this markup well the padding is how much space is going to be around the markup that you will see so if you change that number you're going to see more or less of it and you're going to have to experiment with it with your drawing to see which padding makes the most sense i find the default works in most cases but that's pretty cool huh so you can see what's going on there let's close that and let's go back to the markup list and go to export again i'll do a markup summary i think there was a see i thought there was an option aha this is the option i want to show you here append a hyperlink to the current pdf so what the heck is that going to do i'm going to say okay i have to create the markup summary again and this time look at that there's an arrow or the arrowhead the hand turns into a little pointer so if i click that It'll go to that drawing where that markup lives into that spot. So that's really cool, huh? So you can use that for like cut sheets. You can use it for all sorts of different things. With the markup summary. You can also create a CSV of the markup summary. That's creating an Excel file of the markup summary. So when you start doing measurements and things like that, you can export that to Excel and do Excel type things with your markups. So that is a quick overview of the markup tools inside of Bluebeam Review. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like, thumbs up, subscribe, do all those things that you're supposed to do that everyone asks you to do so that the algorithm finds this video and shares it with more people. Thanks for joining me today, and I hope you join me on another video real soon.